Little green. Little green. Right. 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 I never been to that part of the country where we brought the car in with them. So it was nice taking the bike for you through there and kind of going through a little bit of the vegetable space, those off in the trees and the rivers and all that. And then where we stayed is kind of tucked away from the civilization. It was nice. So I took a little break. Actually, I finished my bachelor's uh, last Sunday. Oh, did you? Yeah, I finished it last Sunday. So, I had to take one more test to finish my degree. And I finished it Sunday after church. Oh, yeah. It was a little later in the evening. My father's day. Yeah. But got to finish up. So, I was like, what am I going to do? So, I had that trip on it. So, that would be a little bit. So, I definitely be ready. Do you have another function? Of course, you're going to be a job. Okay. And you're going to be a job. Did I take your secret somewhere? No, are you sure? Good morning. Good morning. I am Pastor Jennings, welcome from the St. Peter's Lutheran Church on this third Sunday after the Pentecost. We are happy that you have decided to join us for worship today, either in person or watching with us online. As always, it is great to be in the house of the Lord and have this opportunity to worship together. In the narthex are the bulletins for today. The service is completely printed for you, but you're more than welcome to use the hymnal if you'd like to follow along in there. We're using divine service setting number one. On all the hymns and readings and responses are found inside of the bulletin, but you're more than welcome to do that. Also, inside of your bulletin is a half a sheet of paper, which is the outline for my sermon today as well, looking at Galatians chapter 5. We'll have a children's sermon, and we will participate in the sacrament of the altar as well as we get a chance to do that. So again, welcome. Glad you are with us today. I invite you to please stand as we sing our opening hymn on page two.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. O the merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unbelieving. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, reveal us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro and read that responsibly. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For we will speak peace to his people, to his saints, and let them not turn back to God. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness will go before him. And then make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And, and grant us your salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. No, say, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, and nourish us with all goodness, that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings 19. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I only, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go and return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Yehi, the son of Nisha, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat, of Abel Mahova, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escaped from the sword of Hazel shall Yehi put to death. And the one who escaped from the sword of Yehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing the twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelve. Elisha passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. They go out the streets and bring good news of salvation. Their voice has gone out to all the earth. And their words to the ends of the world. Our epistle is from Galatians 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbors as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, 
jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warned you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's invite the children forward. <laughs> Shopping for toys? <laughs> yeah? That's on your to-do list? What about watch TV? Yeah? You do? Wonderful. And a tablet. And a tablet. Okay, cool. What about do your homework? You have homework? Yeah? You have homework. What about help mow the lawn? Do you help mow the lawn? You don't, you don't help mow the lawn? Who, who mows the lawn at your house? Your dad does? Okay. Yeah. What about play with your friends? You play with your friends too? Yeah, a lot of times we make a to-do list because we want to remind ourselves of things that we have to do. Jesus met some folks. I'm going to read a story here in a second. He met some folks and said, hey, guess what? I want you to follow me. So wherever I go, I want you to go with me. But all they kept saying were, I have this giant list of things I have to do first before I can follow you. And Jesus was like, hey, you know, lots of things are important. There's things that we want to do. I bet you want to go shopping for toys, don't you? But you want to do that, don't you? You want to mow the lawn? You want to mow the lawn? You want to make your bed? Wow, you're awesome. <laughs> what about clean your room and pick up your toys? You want to do that too? Wow. <laughs> You're so different than my kids, but that's what <laughs> But Jesus says, what you have to do at the top of your to-do list is to follow me. So Jesus told them, I know you have a whole long list of things that have to be done, but the most important thing to do on your list is to follow Jesus. What do you think about that? Is that a good thing to do? Yeah. We follow Jesus, and Jesus is where? Is he up here? Yeah. yeah. Is he over here? Yeah, is he in here? He's right inside your heart, isn't he? Because that's where he is. So when we follow Jesus, we know that Jesus is right here in our hearts. Yeah. So let's pray. What do you say? Can you sit up? You got it? Okay, so let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for sending us Jesus. Sometimes we feel too busy here. We have too many other things to do on our to-do list than to follow you. Help us to remember to always follow you first. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Gospel according to 
sing Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Let me, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those of my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we sing our sermon. Sit down. 
announcing stand up, stand up for Jesus? Yes. <laughs> but that's okay. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this morning comes from our epistle reading from the fifth chapter of Galatians. There's also a half a sheet of paper inside your bulletin if you'd like to follow along with me. A woman walking down a residential street noticed a little old man sitting in a rocking chair on his porch. She called out to him as she passed, Hello there, I, I couldn't help but notice how happy you look. What's your, what's your secret for a, a, such a long and happy life? He said, I, I smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. I also drink a case of whiskey a week and eat nothing but fast food and I never ever exercise. <laughs> wow. The woman was amazed. How old are you, she asked. He replied, 26. <laughs> yeah, a little old man sounds like he's done a lot of living in a very short amount of time. Not sure how much more his body could take. He could really use some exercise, maybe even just taking a walk would help. Paul, this morning in our epistle reading, is all about walking in his letter to the Galatians. He says that walking is a good thing, as long as you are what? Walking by the Spirit. Not that we have another bad example like we saw from this 26-year-old man, but Paul gives us another look of what it looks like to not walk by the Spirit. He says in verse 17, the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. You see, diametrically opposed to each other. Opposing forces he uses as an image by keeping you from doing what you want to do. And he names some, right? Sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, jealousy, fits of anger and divisions, just to name a few. All things that are against what we really want to do. Now, think about that for a second. Some of those things we want to do, but do we really? Well, our sinful nature wants us to do those things. I want to be jealous of somebody else who's got a nicer car or a bigger television or someone to mow their lawn when I have to do it myself. I get angry at times because of things that happen. I just suppress it so much until eventually what happens? I blow up. I blow my tongue. Sometimes I do put things before God. Idolatry. Not a coincidence that God makes the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. And as I learned it back in my catechism days, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's how I learned it in the small catechism. My nature wants me to do those things. So what is Paul saying then about opposing forces that keep you from doing what you want to do? And Paul is famous for this, right? In Romans chapter 7. He admits to everybody that the good he wants to do, he doesn't. And the bad things he doesn't want to do, those he keeps on doing. I think all of us can relate to Romans 7. There are plenty of things that I am supposed to do that I don't do. Why is that? Well, my sinful nature is the reason why. And sometimes I just give in to those ideas that I can just do whatever I want whatever I want, because as my preschool friends used to say, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. I can act the way I want. I can go where I want. I can stay up as late as I want. Those words all came out of my mouth as a youngster to my parents. <laughs> I can't wait till I can eat whatever I want. Well, see what that's got me. <laughs> I can stay up as late as I want. Well, I gotta get up for work and I'm tired. And so it's a number of things as you learn as you get older, it's not always as glamorous as it seems. But what it does, those are all considered, as Paul says, desires of the flesh. Desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and what God would want us to do. 
one time on television there was a show called What Would You Do? They put actors into everyday situations with hidden cameras to see what the people around would do. They sent an actor into a grocery store. The actor asked to cut in line for the people in front of him. And when he gets to the checkout line, lights and music start playing and a clerk runs out with his big giant check for $500 saying you're our one millionth customer. It's off stage, remember, at the TV show. But the fun part was watching everybody that he cut to get in front of him. They were mad, furious. The guy said, he took my money. One guy threw his stuff on the counter and took out, got out of the grocery store. And the other woman ran to the service desk to raise, well, not heaven. <laughs> It's difficult for us at times, though, to see others' blessings without the why not me attitude. Jealousy. Anger then rears its ugly head. There was a passenger who boarded a plane from L.A. to New York. He told the flight attendant to wake him and make sure he got off the plane in Dallas, Texas. Well, the passenger awoke and the plane was landing in New York. Here is, he called the flight attendant and demanded an explanation. The fellow mumbled some sort of a, an apology and in a rage, the passenger just stomped off the plane. Boy, was he ever mad, another crew member observed to her errant colleague. If you think he was mad, replied the flight attendant, you should have seen the guy I put off the plane in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not perfect and we'll never be on this side of heaven. So what's Paul's advice to us? Walk by the Spirit, right? Walk by the Spirit. Well, what, in a good Lutheran sense, what does that mean? At first glance, you could easily take that to mean we walk by the Spirit, right? You are passing him on the street, like that old man sitting on his front porch. You're going to walk right by him. Well, if you think of it that way, then you then decided not to walk with him. You've rejected him. It's a scary thought, though, although it happens very often. People don't want to believe in Jesus as their Savior. Why? Well, there's all kinds of reasons there are today, but a lot of times it's just too difficult. After all, you have to admit that you are a sinner. You have to admit that you may have done something wrong in your life and that you need someone else to save you. Now, in a very uh, do-it-yourself kind of culture we live in, I don't need help. I can do it myself. And if I can't, I got YouTube. Right? You can find anything on YouTube nowadays. I don't need God. I don't need Jesus. I don't need saving because I can do it myself. Or I just don't have time for God. I don't have time for it. I got so many other things on my to-do list that church, God, and praying, and devotions, and Bible study, just, just not part of what I'm able to do right now. But you and I both know our priorities, right? We have time to do other things. We prioritize what it is we want to get done and not get done. It's hard also to imagine that someone was going to love you without exception. That God loves you no matter what. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, God's love is for you. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and to rise again. To defeat sin, death, and the power of the devil. The devil is working super hard to draw us away from God. To put us in a place where we are not comfortable or a place where we are comfortable. Sometimes it's tough to be too comfortable. We asked a question in our Bible study this last Thursday about uh, in our men's Bible study, five o'clock on Thursdays, love to have you. If you're a man, women be downstairs. So we have Bible studies for both. Talking about when do you feel most, I can't say most closest, right? That's not good English. When do you feel closest to God? During the good times or the bad times? 
And so we kind of run around the table and, and, and confess those things and talk about that a little bit. And we were not equal. We all didn't give the same answer, nor did we expect to give the same answer. When do you feel closest to God? When things are going great. Yeah, God has blessed me so much with everything that I have. I feel so close to him. Or when things are bad. Oh, I need God so much now. I feel so alone and by myself. There is no right or wrong answer here, but you can actually see, am I with God? Is God with me? Of course God is with you. His name is Emmanuel. We heard it at Christmas, right? Which means God with us. We know he is with me. But there are times when I just feel like I don't find him. I don't see him. He's not talking to me. He is not showing himself to me. <laughs> when in fact, I really need him the most. So good, bad, or otherwise, Paul is saying that not only do we, that when we, when we go after the sins of the flesh, that separates us from the Spirit of God. So it's not walking by him like you said, hey, good to see you, hope you have a wonderful day. It's really, as the Greek word tells us, peripateo, which I give you on the bulletin there, is to walk with the Spirit. Huh, that makes, gives you a little different image, doesn't it? Although you could make your argument, I'm walking by him because he's standing next to me, but I like the, the image of walking with the Spirit. And it's, uh, in case you're wondering, in case you're studying your Greek this week, it's a present imperative verb, which means a continued action. A continued action, we also know and understand it as a habit. Something we do over and over again, something we're used to doing. Right? Habits are formed after a certain amount of time. I always get this confused. It's like 30 days or two weeks or 20 times or something that it it develops into a habit, either good or bad. What Paul is here saying, folks, we need to walk with the Spirit all the time. Not just a one and done kind of a thing. I got God, God's got me, we're good. I'll see you on the other side, God, when I feel ready to see you again. It doesn't really work that way, folks. It's a constant reminder and a constant remembrance it even means doing. I like Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Walking means that we're doing, not just sitting on our front porch, smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey. Although you do what you want on your own front porch, I'm not judging you. And that we're not making excuses about why or why not we can get up and go. It means doing something. Well, I read a story about three men who were walking along and came upon a raging, violent river. They needed to get to the other side, but had no idea how to do it. Well, the first man prayed to God and said, Please, God, give me the strength to cross the river. Poof! God gave him big arms and strong legs, and he was able to swim across the river, but it took him about two hours. Saying this, the second guy prayed to God, saying, please, God, give me strength and ability to cross this river. Poof! God gave him a rowboat, and he was able to row across the river in about three hours. Well, the third guy, I saw the first and the second guy, and said, wow, that." That worked out pretty well. So he also prayed to God saying, please God, give me the strength, ability, and intelligence to cross the river. And poof, God turned him into a woman. <laughs> she looked at the map and walked across the bridge. <laughs> I've been waiting all day for that one. That's fine. <laughs> Whether you're a man or a woman, we live and we walk by the Spirit because we have been saved by God's grace. And mercy has given us the ability to walk with him through his son Jesus and his death and resurrection. So what is the result of us walking with the Spirit? Paul gives us those things too, doesn't he? He gives us a list. I believe if you're not looking at me, you're probably looking up that direction, right? 
What happens as a result are the fruits of the Spirit. You know those? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruits of the Spirit come with walking with the Spirit. How else would you show love to someone else? Why do we love? Because God first loved us. Has God shown me kindness? Has God shown patience with me? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I chucked over the boy. It mean, a pastor won't make it any easier. I'll tell you that much. Self-control. All of those things come out of us walking with the Spirit. And who do we give credit for all of these things? God, of course, because he's the one who gives them to us. That's what it looks like. Now, are all of these things going to get you into heaven? No. If I do enough, if I show enough joy to people, then that's going to get me in my right place in heaven with God? No. What gets me in is God's love for me through his son Jesus. And as a result of believing by the spirit that I walk with to know that God loves me, as a result, I do these things. Which is a very Lutheran thing to say, right? We do these things as a thank you, as a result, and it's evident that God is shining through you. <clears throat> Paul also likes to use the image of putting on Christ and being little Christs to people. Christ with flesh on, I think he also uses that terminology. So that people can see Christ through you and the things that you do and the way you treat each other and the way you interact with one another. So walking is not only good for your heart, it's also good for your soul. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of God, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I invite you to please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in my Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light and light. Very God, very God, he God and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. In the third day he rose again. According to the scriptures, that descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our prayers this morning, we want to offer a special prayer for the Lord's Crow, who celebrates her 98th birthday and is in worship with us today. We'd also like to pray, also, a prayer of thanksgiving and healing for Neil, who is actually, uh, was home, is home from the hospital and also in worship with us today as well. We also offer a prayer for all of those we have on our prayer list, the members and care homes for our missionaries, for those who celebrate their birthday and baptismal birthdays this week as well. We go to our God in prayer. Dear God, our Father, we thank you so much for giving us the spirit that we can walk with them that you always walk with us, that you are in us and near us and, and help us as we come and try to fight the desires of the flesh. 
Help us to continue to see your love for us and the wonderful gifts that you've blessed us with and those fruits of the Spirit that come out of knowing exactly who you are and what you've done for us through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. Today we offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the Lord's his birth, Lord, 98 years old. We also offer a prayer of thanksgiving that Neil is home from the hospital and able to be with us in worship today. We pray for all of those we have on our prayer list, those members who are in care homes and for our missionaries as well. We pray for Sandy and Dolores and Kathy and Lucy as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Also the baptismal birthdays for Kelly and Samuel. Again, celebrating the fact that you have uh, brought them into your family and that you walk with them as well. Today we come before you with a repentant heart, knowing that our, we, are, we need our sins forgiven and that we get that through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Help us that we come in a worthy manner only given to us by Christ to have this opportunity to, to taste and see that the Lord is good, in with and under the bread and wine, the body and blood. Be with us as we have the many prayers in our hearts and our minds this day. And we ask for your blessing upon those and to hear our prayers as we bring them to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated as we collect the offering. with the individual cups for the common cup as well. We continue with our service in the sacrament. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your heart. <laughs> salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you, to steal in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thank you all again for joining us in worship this morning, whether in person or watching one of us online. We are always grateful for that. Thank you, Lynn, for being our keynote today. We appreciate that. But after church, we have a meeting for all those who are involved in Vacation Bible School. It's still not too late if you'd like to volunteer and help out with that. But we will be having a meeting. Where is the meeting? We're going to do it downstairs. A little more room down there. Also, um, tonight at 7 o'clock is a Singspiration for the Ministerial Alliance. It'll be at a faith, or a First Baptist, I'm going to say Faith Baptist, but First Baptist Church at 7, if uh, Singspiration is uh, for you this evening. This coming week is a Mission of Love on Thursday and Men's the Bible Study, and then next Sunday is Sunday School and Worship with the Board of Christian Education after church, and then our Ice Cream Social as we head into the 4th of July holiday. Also, the newsletter for July is out. It should be printed for you in the back of the narthex, or um, you want to look at the color version. I think it's been emailed to you, or then put on our our website as well. If you'd like to take a look at that for the July newsletter. Also, we have. Are you ready? We have portals of prayer that are here for July to September, and I have some volunteers who'd like to give you your own copy if you haven't had a chance yet. And they are willing to uh, distribute those out. And if you would like one, we have little ones and mid sized ones and big ones. Take one for yourself or give one to a neighbor if you need it. If you'd like to have one, then Scott and Greta will are your servants today for the portals of fire. And we have, more, if we run out in here, we have more on the table back in the back. But also, I wanted to say that uh, for next yeah. Sunday's ice cream, if you have volunteered to bring um, cake and ice cream. You can have it here at 6 o'clock. I would really appreciate it. And right. I would like some more helpers if anyone wants to help. You want? You guys need one? A medium? I'll get some in the back. There's more, the little ones are in the back. Yes, please. Okay, the BBS meeting will be in the big Sunday school room down the hall on the left. Where the elevator is. What's that? Which big Sunday school room is it? I don't know what that is. <laughs> so go down the hall and turn right. And we'll see you down that way. Is it the choir room? Oh, here comes the little bit. I'll give you a second to look. Yes, ma'am. Get more of their containers for the ice cream, so whatever they bring, they need to have their If you out. bring ice cream or cake or whatever, please mark your container. If you're a good Lutheran, your name's already on the bottom of it, right? Masking tape with your name on it. I mean, that's how I remember it growing up, but anyway. Does anybody else have an announcement or otherwise? Before we go, one of the wonderful things that we get a chance to do is take a look at our Bible verse. And so as we do that, think about how it affects your week. What can we rejoice always and pray continually about? So let's say that together, please. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. God's blessings on your day.